This presentation is an addendum to lecture essay 20. Here, I will focus on the derivation of a specific equation used in that lecture. Please review lecture essay 20 before proceeding with this presentation. Lecture essay 20 dealt with using the work energy principle for determining deflection in beams. Let's watch a short video clip of that lecture. Not surprisingly, the product of M and R is constant. For linear elastic material, this constant can be expressed in terms of modulus of elasticity of the material and moment of inertia of the beam segment about the axis of bending. More specifically, we can write M times R equals E times I where E is modulus of elasticity and I is the moment of inertia. This equation states that the product of the bending moment in the beam and its radius of curvature equals the modulus of elasticity of the material times the beam's moment of inertia. In that lecture, the equation was presented without a derivation, prompting questions from a few students wanting to know why the relationship holds. In this presentation, I will derive that equation from a few basic concepts we already have established as true. Consider a beam in pure bending. I am going to refer to the modulus of elasticity of the beam's material as E, and use I, for the moment of inertia of the beam's cross-section about its bending axis. Let's focus on an infinitesimal segment of the beam. Here is a magnified view of the segment. The infinitesimal width of the segment is denoted by dx. Under the bending moment, the segment deforms like this. The top fiber of the segment shortens, and the bottom fiber elongates. Hence, there must be a fiber within the segment whose length remains unchanged. Here, I've shown that fiber using a dashed curve. The arc length of the curve, therefore, is dx. If we call the angle facing the arc length, d theta, then this length forms the radius of a hypothetical circle. We can label it R, and call it radius of curvature. dx can be defined in terms of d theta, and R. The arc length of a circle, equals the angle facing the arc length, times the circle's radius. So we can write, dx equals, R, times d theta, or, This line represents the right edge of the beam segment, this edge. Obviously, the line here has a bit of rotation because of the beam's deflection. If we redraw that line here, like this, we can see that this angle equals d theta. Let's refer to this arc length as delta, and denote this distance as c. Then, we can write, Delta equals C times D theta, or From these two equations, we can see that this relationship holds true. By the way, we refer to this axis as the beam's neutral axis. So, C is the distance from the neutral axis to the outer fiber of the segment. Let's rearrange and write this equation as Recalling the definition of axial strain, we can write I use epsilon to represent axial strain. Consider an axially loaded member. Suppose, under the applied load, the member has a total elongation of delta. Then, epsilon can be written as delta over L. We can consider the bottom fiber of our beam segment as an axially loaded member. The initial length of the member is dx. Here we can see that the member has elongated by delta. So, this term, delta over dx, is the axial strain at the bottom fiber of the beam segment. Let's refer to it as epsilon max. Also, 
Recall that axial stress can be written as axial force divided by the cross-sectional area of the member. We denote axial stress using sigma. Using Hooke's law, we can relate axial stress to axial strain using this equation. Here, E is the material's modulus of elasticity. Let's rewrite Hooke's law as Replacing sigma with sigma max, and epsilon with epsilon max, we get Bending stress develops when a beam segment is subjected to a bending moment. Assuming the material behaves linearly, the bending stress distribution at the sides of the segment forms triangles. At the top part of the segment, we have compressive stress. At the bottom, we have tensile stress. Sigma max here, representing the maximum tensile stress in the segment, is the sigma max used in this equation. Suppose this is the cross-section of the beam. If we denote the moment of inertia of the cross-section about the axis of bending as I, then sigma max can be expressed as Now, knowing that sigma max equals m times c over i, we can rewrite this equation as So, c over r, which is equal to epsilon max, can be written as This equation simplifies to Or There you have it, the derivation of the equation that relates bending moment, radius of curvature, modulus of elasticity, and moment of inertia.